without looking at me, Billy, look up like that. I want you to just start into the letter from there. And look down and pick up the letter. This is a letter addressed to Hugh Johnson, who was head of the NRA. And it comes from some workers at Eagle and Phoenix Mill in Columbus, Georgia. Please accept my congratulations for you and Mr. Roosevelt as being the two greatest men on earth. I am writing you in regards to the textile code. Please excuse me if I am wrong, but the way I understand it, no textile worker was supposed to take on any more work. But my wife was laid off today because she refused to take on four more looms. She works for W.C. Bradley, the hardest piece of humanity on earth, at the Eagle and Phoenix Mill in Columbus, Georgia. Now I've had wove and fixed looms for over three years. I've been disabled to work on account of pellagra. Thank God I didn't have to work much for Hoover. Will you please investigate this matter? I am sincerely looking to you for support, thanking you in advance for any favor you might return me. I am yours very truly, A.L. Williams. That letter, uh, of course, refers to Pellegra, which was a terrible uh, scourge in, these, in, in this part of the country along with hookworm and was a dietary uh, disease uh, it was discovered ultimately. And uh, I think uh, it might be interesting to read uh, an account of uh, a meeting called by William Anderson, who was president of Bid Manufacturing Company here in Columbus in 1931, because it has reference to uh, diet and uh, might explain some of the causes of pellagra among the local mill workers. Uh, this is uh, dated September 15, 1934, but it's an account of a meeting that took place three years earlier. On Sunday, October the 1st, 1931, William D. Anderson, president of Bib Manufacturing Company, had some 1,200 of his workers assemble at what he called a rally in a schoolhouse in Columbus, Georgia. Anderson had bought, bought these mill workers together to enlighten their minds. They were already on short time, and cotton mill wages on full time are pretty scanty. But Mr. Anderson told them that they would have no trouble in caring for themselves if they bought the right foods. Here's a list of supplies which he set forth as ample for a textile worker's family of four persons for an entire week. 24 pounds of flour at 60 cents, 4 pounds of lard, 35 cents, 8 pounds of potatoes, 16 cents, and a peck of cornmeal at 25 cents for a total expenditure of $1.36 for the week. You can see that this diet is well in, uh, calculated to induce pellagra as well as other dietary disease. It contains no vegetables and no meat and no fresh milk. So. Good. Thank you, Francis. Great.